Siemens Servo 300 ventilator. We're going to take a close-up view of the uh, panel of the Siemens 300. And so let's just go right in here. Now, this section is a section with the modes. You can see that we have mode, ventilator off, battery charging, we have standby. These two are very similar. The only difference with a standby is it activates electronics and keeps everything warm and active. It will go through its initial check and you can hear with the standby mode a little clicking which indicates that it's in standby plus we have here the standby indicator in the uh, digital display screen. We're going to go right into uh, volume support, which is your CMV, and that's where we're going to be because in adults that's most typically what we're going to be in. This is pressure control, and pressure control is your CMV. PRVC is up here, and these are all assist control type modes. One is pressure, one is volume. And then we have PRVC, which is a control mode that's kind of a little bit between the two. On the other side, these are support modes. You have volume support, SIMV volume control, and that's typically what you'll be using for adults when they're delivering a tidal volume. And here is SIMV pressure control and pressure support CPAP. And the last one is an optional mode for new uh, parameters that could come along. Now let's take a look. There are columns of information on the 300 ventilator. This column starts out with the neo pediatric and adult selection and that sets your ranges and your alarms and you can go into the uh, PowerPoint to identify what those ranges are. But basically we will silence the alarm in the neo mode, the alarms are much different than in the adult mode, as well as the delivery of the ventilator parameters and information. And the reason we're getting alarms is it changes the configuration of the volumes that the patient gets. Now below that, from here down, is your airway pressure controls and monitoring. Note red and green colors to the digitals, red meaning an actual measured, a green meaning a dial setting. And we have digital readings here for peak, mean, pause, and end expiratory, which is PEEP. These pressures are actual measured. We have knobs, which the first one, being all red, is an alarm knob. And the alarm here is upper pressure limit. We know that as high pressure limit or high pressure alarm. And that is typically set 10 above the peak here. So if we're at 28, we want this at 38. Down below, these are controls. A pressure control level above PEEP. This is the control that you use in PVC, PCV, pressure control ventilation. Then you have pressure support, PSV, and you have your PEEP and your trigger. Now, unlike some of the older machines that have a manometer gauge, here we have a digital gauge. And right here at the, the above zero mark is our sensitivity. Note what happens when I change sensitivity. It will move up or down, and then above the sensitivity, is your PEEP level. And here I'll show you. PEEP will track and pull sensitivity with it. The moving diodes is your pressure. It's similar to the needle on the uh, manometer gauge. And then you also have your upper pressure limit here. Now if we were in a mode that allowed us pressure support or pressure control, diodes would uh, light up for those. Now, some lights here are showing. The lit lights are the ones that 
are functioning. Note in the pressure control and pressure support, they're not lit. Peep and trigger sensitivity are lit. And that's because in the volume control, these are the ones, the functions that are active. So when anything that is lit is a control that you must set or at least check to make sure it is correct. So let's go back now to uh, here is our mode selector. We went through that. Below this is respiratory pattern right in here. We have four um, four digitals. One is the measured frequency. That is what this knob is set at. Then we have or actually this is what the patient is breathing because it's red. It's indicating the patient's breath. This is what this knob is set at. This is the CMV rate. And you have your inventory time in seconds based on the rate. 25 percent of the total time for this rate gives us an inventory of 0.86 second. And here we have liters per second and if you wanted to uh, identify how much liters per minute, you'd have to multiply that times 60, 60 seconds in a minute. Now, one way we can change some of this is by touching standby and then another function and you see that it will give you time, total time in seconds here instead of the I time and then it'll give you your I to E in this second window. On some ventilators, some modes, models, this will change to liters per minute. To cancel this out, just wait a few seconds and it'll cancel itself or hit standby again and it'll clear it and go back to the normal functioning readings. Okay, going down these knobs, we have the CMV rate and then we have the in story time percent, pause time percent, in story rise time. And then when you're in the SIMV mode, as over here, this becomes your rate. Now, remember, this rate can never exceed this rate. So if we have this set at 16, which we do, and we try and turn this in the SIMV mode to 20, you'll get no more than 20. Uh, then you will not get the 20, but you will get nothing more than 16 when you are in the SIMV mode. In this mode, it doesn't do anything because it's not lit. Let's go back over here, switch to SIMV. Now it's lit. And note, I turn this knob to 20. The light is flashing, indicating there is a conflict between this knob and this knob. And so it's not giving us anything more than 16 breaths unless we change this. Now when we change this knob, it's going to change the tidal volume. So if I went up, watch over here, to 20, our tidal volume went down, and then I would have to dial this up. So let's go back to uh, 14. There we go. And we'll turn this back to volume support. That's our CMV. Now, volume column, we have our tidal volume control, only one knob right here. This is our set or dialed in tidal volume. So we want to go and make that 700. We turn the knob and then we get our minute volume calculated. Our inspiratory tidal volume, what is going into the patient and what is being measured in the expiratory side of the ventilator. Then we have our actual measured expiratory minute volume in red. Remember, green is dial settings, red is actual measure. These two columns are our minute volume indicator. Note we have two red knobs, high minute volume alarm, low minute volume alarm, and the diodes that match each. And the middle one, oops, I gotta be careful not to touch. The middle one is our actual measure, 10.2. So if I wanted to make sure that that diode is 4 above the 10, I just simply turn it until I read the bottom of the diode. And same here, 
bring this up to six, and that would give me four liters per minute either side of this 10.2. Red knobs are your adjustable alarm settings. Over here on this column is our oxygen concentration. Our dial setting here will display the calculated amount. So this is green. It simply refers to where do I have this dial set. And then down here is the actual measure. There is a fuel cell inside and since we're using air right now it will give me a warning saying O2 concentration too low meaning we're on air it's measuring air it's not able to give me 30 percent oxygen because it's only measuring air. You also get a red light indicating the problem down here. This is our alarm messages and you see that it reads the FiO2, the PO2, I mean the FiO2 in percent right here and displays it continuously and then these alarms will sound as conditions arise. So if I have an alarm, you'll notice what's happening. Alarms and they did, once the red flashing is corrected, we'll let this happen again, goes to red, indicates the problem, and you get a different increasing sound tone as the problem gets longer and worse. Once the problem is fixed, It'll take a little bit for the minute volume to rise above our low minute volume. As soon as it does, the alarm will silence itself. There we go. And then the alarms go into a warning. This guy, these sounded. And we can clear those warning indicators by turning this knob reset in the silence uh, and vanish. Now there's a two minute silence for certain alarms. It does not work on high pressure alarms. So let me show you, this is our high pressure limit. And if we have a high pressure condition, if I can, airway pressure too high. When you hear intermittent beeping like that, that usually indicates this alarm is sounding. You need to read these. Watch here. A red light indicating airway pressure flashes on and then goes to yellow and this indicator is showing in here. After a while we'll lose our minute volume and you may get a minute volume alarm as well. Over here down below this bars of indicators is the reset as I said. This is a toggle switch. You turn this up to silent to reset the lights. Turn it down for a two-minute silence. Below that is your pause hold, in-story pause, ex-story pause, and the last section is here auto mode, and that allows you to be in volume support. And in the auto mode, it'll go between volume support and pressure control regulated volume control and then back again as the patient either stops breathing or starts breathing. There's other modes that this will go back and forth to but uh, that's the most uh, uh, significant one at this point. That completes the control panel of the 300 ventilator. Thank you.